I am Harold Moret, Project Manager for the Copper Development Association, or CDA. Welcome to another video in our Do It Proper with Copper series. Over the years, CDA has been asked if there is a recommended method for fabricating strong leak-free solder joints between copper tube and copper alloy flanges. This video will explain and demonstrate the proper fabrication steps. Two variables that must be taken into account when soldering copper alloy flanges is their bulk and weight. The most important thing to understand is that flanges contain a huge heat sink in the flange face itself. This tends to pull heat away from the solder cup and can lead to insufficient solder fill in the fitting socket. In this case, careful additional heating of the flange face may be necessary. So let's get started. First, the tube must be measured so that it can be inserted completely into the back of the flange socket. Cut the tube square at the desired length. Ream and deburr the inside edge of the tube and chamfer the outside edge of the tube. Clean and remove any oxides, dirt, or other particles from the outside of the tube and the inside of the flange socket. Apply a thin, even coating of an approved solder flux material to the outside of the tube and the inside of the flange socket. Assemble them together. Remove any excess flux from the outside of the tube. Begin preheating the bottom two-thirds of the tube and the bottom two-thirds of the flange socket. Because the flange face is a huge heat sink, additional heating of the flange face in the area of the tube socket may be necessary. Care should be exercised when preheating the flange face to ensure that the fitting socket is not overheated. Starting at the bottom of the flange socket, at approximately the five o'clock position, always keeping the flame ahead of the solder alloy, complete the joint. When finished, allow it to cool to the touch. Chalk cooling or quenching may cause rapid shrinking of the cast flange that could contribute to cracking of the solder alloy or the flange itself. If working in a cold environment, it is recommended that you bring the heat down slowly. But what if you're brazing a copper alloy flange? The same steps we just covered in the soldering portion are also required for a brace joint. However, a bracing flux and a higher temperature torch like oxyacetylene is necessary. In addition, apply bracing flux on the outside of the flange socket, which will limit the possibility of overheating it. And finally, all solder joints should be fabricated using the steps and procedures outlined in ASTM B828, standard for soldering of copper and copper alloy tube and fittings. Additional information related to soldering or bracing copper alloys can be found in the Copper Tube Handbook, which can be downloaded as an app from the Apple or Google Play stores. To learn more about these techniques and applications, visit us at www.copper.org. Thank you for watching.